On this episode of Tom Talks, we are going to feature this stunning Ferrari Daytona. Now we have featured a Daytona on a previous episode, so we know a little bit about the model. We know they were first launched at the 1968 Paris Motor Show. They were originally intended to be a stopgap between Ferrari's 275 GTB4 and their 365 GT4 Berlinetta Boxer. They were designed by Pininfarina, although the bodies were um, put together at Scaglietti. The designer himself would later go on to um, design the 288 GTO and the Ferrari F40. They utilize the same independent rear suspension as the GTB4 and the same five-speed transaxle. However, they were fitted with a very powerful 4.4 liter quad cam V12 engine that produced some 352 brake horsepower. In total, they made 1,284 Daytonas, but only 158 of those cars were UK right-hand drive examples, such as the car we're going to talk about today. Now, this particular example was delivered new in August 1972, and it's one of only 13 cars delivered in this very attractive colour of Morone Metallizzato. I'm not sure if I said that right or not, but I'm sure all of our Italian followers will correct me or, or not. Um, the car was delivered new with the beige interior and the beige carpets, and it would stay with the first owner until 1975, at which time the car passed into the very well-known and well-respected UK-based Ferrari collector, Mr. Dudley Mason Stirrin. Now, Dudley at the time, owned one of the seven right-hand drive Daytona Spiders. And that particular car at that time was in Rosso Corsa, or as some of us know it, retail red. Um, and Dudley decided to repaint this beautiful Morone car into a matching uh, Rosso Corsa to, to match his Daytona Spider. The car would stay with Dudley until 1977 and we recently spoke with him and he commented on what a great car it was and a, a great example of a Daytona. It would then pass to another Ferrari enthusiast in the south of England who would go on to keep the car until 1987 and then that gentleman would pass it on one more time to a gentleman who would keep the car until 1991 and then from 1991 until September 2019, it's resided with the same collector amongst some of the most fantastic cars in the world. And then I was offered the car in September 2019 and it was still in Rosso. Um, I knew that the car's original color was this fantastic color. Um, but it was in Rosso and I decided to go and have a look at the car. Anyway, when I went to inspect it, I was um, blown away by how original the car was. It still retained all of its original interior, its original carpets. When I was looking around the car, I could see it retained all, its, all of its original glass, its original headlamps, its original tail lamps, all of its body numbers were still in place and it was showing 21,400 miles, um, which you always question whether it's original or not. Um, the gentleman told me that the car had not been used since 1991, since when um, they purchased the car. And I decided to dig into it a little bit deeper. So I had a look at the history file and everything in the history file supported that the mileage was correct and everything about the car supported that the mileage was correct. All this beautiful leather interior, um, as I say, the original carpet, it had the original um, mouse hair dash, although it was badly stained. Anyway, we bought the car and immediately, as soon as we bought the car, we decided we took the, um, what should I say, the, we made the correct decision in sending it to our expert friends in Italy which would be Cremonini and the great Bonini. Uh, Cremonini are the body shop that um, specialise in the bodywork and paintwork. 
Bonini are the mechanical specialists. They're actually a, a, a authorized Ferrari dealer in the Modena region. However, they've been specializing in these particular cars since they were new. Um, and we decided to put the car back to its original color combination. Now, when the car arrived there in the Rosso paint, Cremonini first started scrubbing the paint down and they instantly found the original color of Morone underneath the, the Rosso layers, um, which you would probably wouldn't see today because if a car was repainted today, um, all of the paint is taken off and most of the time it goes back to the bare metal. But back in the mid seventies, Dudley, I'm sure, just literally repainted the car. Anyway, Cremonini um, stripped the car down to bare metal and then all of the mechanics were completely rebuilt. So we rebuilt the engine, the gearbox, the suspension, everything was done. At some point in the car's life, these leather sill coverings and the surround behind the air conditioning unit were changed from the original black color to a matching beige. These items we changed in the um, refurbishment and we put it back to the correct finish. We also replaced the very badly stained original mouse hair dash, but we replaced it with a correct mouse hair type. We refurbished all of the instrument dials, but otherwise the whole original interior has been retained. So all of the original leather, the center tunnel, the carpets, all of it, including the headlining, the sun visors were all retained. Now, the really sexy part is underneath the bonnet. Shall we take a look? I look under here and I'm certain that I've eaten off a dirtier plates. Now, we've spoken about Bonini before, but they really are a special company. They're a business that the knowledge has been passed from father to son. Um, they do tremendous work. They've been dealing with these cars since they were new, servicing, maintaining, restoring. And when we gave them the remit to fully go through the car, there was no corners cut. They've done a full engine rebuild, a full transaxle rebuild, suspension, everything. You look at the bonnet struts, you even look at um, all the, the wiring, the, the, um, the fuse box, uh, the distributors, the heat insulation underneath the bonnet. Um, it's all been totally gone through. Everything else has been done. Um, all the mechanical items completely rebuilt. Uh, you look at the wheels, all of the chrome. The car still retains, I think I spoke earlier about it, um, its original Corello headlamps. When we removed a lot of the body panels in the restoration, you see the, the body numbers stamped in the relevant places. It's got all of its original Secura uh, glass all the way around. This really is a, a very, very special car and it's a special car because not only is it a fantastic original color combination, I mean, is there a better period color for a Daytona than this? It's, you know, I think of all the different blues and reds and silvers and grays that I've ever purchased over the years, this is undoubtedly the best looking Daytona. But the other thing that's quite special about this car is that, you know, a, a Daytona isn't at the same price point yet as say a 275. So when you're selling a car that's millions of pounds, it's easy to stomach a very expensive refurbishment. But when you're selling a car that's a little bit, well, quite a bit cheaper, you know, it's then hard to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on a car. And we've done that with this particular car. And that's what I think makes this Daytona unique. There hasn't been a Daytona that is as well sorted as this car. And as I really don't think there's been one as well prepared where Bonini have gone through the whole car and done a complete rebuild of the mechanical components. And then you've had Cremonini do the cosmetics. Um, it really is a, a very special car. And I think now, is the exciting part because 
I'm going to go and see how good this Benini work really is. So she's had very little use since 1991 and fresh from a complete mechanical overhaul by the very best in the business. Let's see how she performs. Key in the ignition. Turn the ignition around. Open the throttle just a little. And fires straight up. Now, I never like to set off until I see some temperature in the water. However, it looks like our boy John T has pre-warmed her for me. Seat belt on. Very importantly, sunglasses on. Let's just check all gauges. Plenty of fuel. Plenty of temperature in the water. Now, we might just switch the air conditioning on. Always important to have factory fitted air conditioning on one of these. And let's set off. Bonini really are the best mechanical specialists on Ferrari in the business. Super easy to drive at low speeds. And this brings me on to something. Now, I really am very pedantic about ensuring a car is returned to its original specification whenever we send a car to be restored or have work done. I've deviated slightly on this car. Um, I owned a Daytona for several years myself and the one thing that lets a Daytona down from experience is very heavy steering at low speeds. Of recent years, a lot of people have been installing a power assisted steering that's a progressive power assisted steering. Um, it's a simple bolt on an item that you can easily install and easily take off, and it absolutely transforms the car. And when we was having the mechanical overhaul done by Bonini, I spoke with Renato Bonini about it. It's something that he really supports on Daytona's. The other thing that we decided to do was leave the car with open trumpets, velocity stacks. They look so much better, they sound so much better. Renato also supplied us with um, a velocity stack sock, so when the car isn't being used, you can put the sock over the trumpets, which stops any dust or dirt getting inside. And that's the only thing that you need to be concerned about when you remove the air box. So, now we're a bit more up to temperature. Oh yes! Okay, let's go! It's time to see exactly what this car can do. The Daytona really comes into its own about 4,000 RPMs. And I know my good friend Renato Benini is watching this saying, Tom, please take care of my engine. And I've just got to say to you, Renato, you shouldn't have built it so good. 